Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be talking about how Freud popularized the unconscious, and I'm popularizing unconscious will. Okay, before we go into that, I would just want to do what I ordinarily do um, before the main topic, just go over why I'm doing the show, and, um, and you know, just a brief description of what we mean by free will and why it's impossible. Okay, uh, <laughs> basically I'm doing the show because I believe the free will belief is very destructive. If we weren't blaming ourselves and each other for everything that's not really up to us, it's not really our fault, it's not our doing, we'd create a much more harmonious, wonderful world. <laughs> um, now, basically when we say we have a free will, we mean that, um, one, whatever we do is completely up to us. Nothing that's not in our control is making us do anything. And two, that, um, that we are morally responsible for what we do. Um, because, one, nothing is making us do it. Okay, so the, the basic um, two reasons why free will is impossible. One is because everything has a cause. You know, that's like the fundamental process of nature. Um, if there was no causality in the universe, there'd be no change, nothing would be happening, and if there's nothing happening naturally, you know, nothing would happen. This show wouldn't happen. Uh, so causality is that fundamental to nature, and naturally if every one of our causes, of our choices, has a cause, then that means that, um, you know, there's a cause to that cause, a cause to that cause, and this causal regression that ensues just is what makes free will impossible. You have things happening before the planet was created four million year, billion years ago, rather, um, determining what's happening now. All right, so that's the causality explanation. The other explanation is, um, main explanation, is that we have an unconscious. Um, anytime we make a decision, we have to draw on information about which to make the decision. You know, moral principles, hedonic principles, uh, does it make sense? And all this stuff, you have to realize our conscious mind can only hold one or maybe a few things um, in mind at once, so that naturally when we make a decision, we're drawing on all that stuff, and it's in the unconscious, and our, un and our conscious mind is, even is not even aware you know, of the unconscious, and naturally, naturally see how the, the decision, if, if the data for the decision is in the unconscious, the decision has to be made at the level of the unconscious, because that's the only part of our brain that has access to that. All right, so that's basically why free will's impossible, why it's an illusion. So now let's um, let's get on with with the topic. Okay, about a hundred years ago, um, Floyd, Freud, Zygmunt Freud, explained he was um, I think he was a neurologist. I don't know. Uh, explained to um, to the world that um, that we have an unconscious. Now he popularized this. It wasn't like the first time people had heard this. You know, the Greeks were aware of this. Uh, the mesmerists, uh, hypnotists before Freud. Um, but what Freud did is like he understood its significance. He understood its significance in, in terms of like, well, I mean, he was a doctor, so he was basically trying to heal people. So he, you know, what he came up with, like, he's known, he's really recognized for two things. One, popularizing the notion of the unconscious, and two, um, explaining how when we um, talk, when we talk, what, what we're doing when we talk is we're accessing the unconscious, but it's not like we're consciously willing to access it. In other words, when we talk, what I'm saying right now, what you're hearing, you know, it's basically the unconscious making our conscious mind aware of what's happening. Okay, that's, that's really what's happening. So, um, so because of that, Freud kind of introduced like the talking therapy that um, we can resolve issues, you know, by, by accessing, again, not, not really because it's the unconscious that's responsible, but, you know, um, by kind of like encouraging the unconscious to release its, its, um, its information, its thoughts, its, you know, resolutions to the conscious mind, you know, to make us aware of what's going on, that, um, that were not for the talking, were we not talking, then um, our conscious mind just couldn't be aware of. All right, and that, you know, it was a powerful, um, it's a powerful, you know, concept um, to popularize this thing of the unconscious. 
um, psychoanalysis, psychotherapy, cognitive therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy. These are all talking therapies that work extremely well in many cases um, in resolving negative emotions, negative you know, disconflicts, whatever. But here's the thing. Um, see, Freud never made the full connection. He, he does. He does state um, that he believes free will is an illusion, but he never challenged it. He never challenges it. He never, like, you know, if he would have challenged it back 100 years ago, I don't think anybody today would believe that we have free will. But he just kind of, like, he makes a statement, and he doesn't, he's a, he doesn't even... Actually, I, I can't say for sure because I haven't read, you know, his work extensively. But to my knowledge, I, I don't think he, he posits that it's the existence of the unconscious that makes free will impossible. And, and so, so that's, you know, that's what I'm doing, you know. Um, and it, so, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's a great achievement. It, it's, it's a, you know, and I, I have to laugh while I'm saying this because like, you know, the whole premise of this show is that like, well, we don't have a free will, so we can't either be blamed for anything or take credit for anything. So this is a very, you know, as I'm saying that, yeah, I'm doing something probably certainly greater than, than, yeah, absolutely greater than what Freud did. Um, that, that I can't take credit for it. It's, it's basically the universe kind of like compelling me to do this. It's, I have absolutely no choice in doing this, which keeps me humble, <laughs> which is good. All right. But, um, all right. So like basically, yeah, I'm popularizing. I'm, you know, with this show, this is, this is episode number 50. You know, I've got the Manhattan show that we do. It's a live call-in show where we explain all this stuff. And the book I just published, Exploring Illusion of Free Will, which is basically a transcript of the first 18 episodes of this show. Anyway, so yeah, basically what I'm doing is that like I'm, I'm, I'm teaching the world that wait a minute, it's not just that we have an unconscious, it's that because we have an unconscious, free will is impossible. And because free will is impossible, <laughs> you know, our entire world is diluted and to the extent that we get this correct, we can create a much, much better world. Okay. Um, I, I've got to get into why, you know, the unconscious makes free will impossible. Um, basically, um, whenever we, we decide anything, we have to base it on, on data. We have to base it on, um, on information we've learned in the past. You know, if we have a decision, choose A or B, you know, if, if there's no reason for it, if it's arbitrary, um, then certainly that's not a freely willed decision, you know, because like you, by, by the term free will, we tend to mean that, that we, can, we can take credit for what we um, decide, that, that it's up to us. And, um, and there's certainly, if we're going to take credit for it, we, there certainly has to be a reason for uh, what we're doing. But um, so like if, if there's no reason, uh, well, that, that's just incoherent. But anyway, um, so you've got an unconscious, we have an unconscious, we all have an unconscious, and, and, um, and how do we know that we have an unconscious? Well, think of, all the, think of all the words that you know, your entire vocabulary. That's a good way to explain this, I think. Um, you've got an entire vocabulary, I don't know, thousands of words. You can't be aware of all those words you know, at one time. It's just, you know, you can't consciously do that, you know. <laughs> so, so what does that mean? Um, and it's not just words, it's concepts, it's impressions, but let, let's stick with words. So, um, so what does that mean? That means that um, all this, all these words, our entire vocabulary has to be stored in our unconscious. Now, think about this. Um, the reason we call this part of our mind the unconscious is because we can't access it in real time. In other words, we can't say to ourselves, all right, now I'm going to sift through, you know, the contents of my unconscious for some information. The reason we can't do that is because we're, we're not aware of the unconscious. The unconscious is, a, is operating under our level of conscious awareness. Um, it's the same reason why we can't 
we're not aware of, of our unconscious regulating our heartbeat or our, our um, nervous system or the, the various organs that it, that it regulates. Um, all right, so, so, so now think about this. All of our thoughts, all of our memories, all of our words are stored in this part of our mind that we are not conscious of. So what's happening when we make a decision? Okay. <clears throat> Right now, um, as you're hearing me talk, there are two things that are happening. One, you're conscious of, of um, hearing me talk. You know, it's a perception. You, you've got ears and you're hearing the, the sound waves and they're becoming conscious to you. But the second thing that's happening is that you're unconscious. That part of your mind that you're not aware of is also hearing what, um, what, what I'm saying. Okay, so like... And so, like, any time you make a decision, let, let's say a person asks you to choose between, you know, going to school to be an environmental scientist or school, going to school to be a psychologist, okay? Um, so if somebody asks you that, it's not just your conscious mind that's hearing that. You know, your unconscious is hearing it as well. It's, your unconscious is basically presented the choice, you know, um, a, am I going to be an environmental scientist or a psychologist? Okay, now, so you've got like, now think about it, like in determining an answer to that, you've got the conscious mind, it cannot sift through what's in the unconscious because again, it can't access it, you know, it's, it's so the only part of the mind that can really consider that question in order to, um, give a decision is the unconscious. That's, that's the key. That's the key. Um, think about this. Um, everything, and here's the thing, yeah, if, if, we, if we have everything in our, our mind upon which we base a decision in the unconscious, what comes across very clear is that it is the unconscious that's also making that decision. Okay, um, I just have to um, note at this point, there's, there's a book that came out in 2002 by Daniel Wegner, who's a um, psychologist, and it's an excellent book. It's called The Illusion of Conscious Will. Now, I haven't, I think I'm about a third through it, I've, I've skimmed through it, and I, I don't think, I don't think, I, I hope I um, don't get this wrong, um, but I don't think he goes as far as, as saying that, that all, that, that everything we decide is decided at the level of the unconscious. But this book, again, the, Explore, um, the Ill Illusion of Conscious Will, th this book gives many examples of how we think we're consciously deciding something when actually decisions made at the level of an unconscious. One that I can um, <coughs> talk about briefly is um, there's a kind of like a computer set up with a kind of like an Ouija board thing. You have two subjects. They're, um, they have their hands on this kind of a mouse thing and they're, they're moving in and the cursor on the screen is moving along with it. Okay, so you have one person who's the subject in the experiment, the second person is a cohort. He's involved in the experiment, he's working, you know, with the experimenter. Now, what the cohort is instructed to do is like to consciously move or that, that mouse around because both, again, both the subject and the cohort have their hands on this mouse apparatus. And the cohort is, is instructed to consciously move this mouse around, you know, given times to different areas on the computer screen. Now, the interesting thing about this experiment is like repeatedly um, they can create the impression, you know, in the subject that it's they it's they who, who is actually um, responsible for that movement. So anyway, this, this book goes through a lot of different kinds of experiments like that where they don't necessarily, you know, directly show that free will is impossible per se, but, they sh it, but it shows in so many ways how, how what we tend to attribute to our conscious mind is actually taking place in our unconscious mind. And, and naturally, when you understand that, it's much easier to wrap yourself around this idea that um, the free will is an illusion. Okay, um, so I've got about 12 and a half minutes. Um, 
All right, again, I, I hope you understand um, the importance of, of not just understanding that we have an unconscious, but that our will, our human will is unconscious. Again, you have both the, the data, if all the data that we make our decisions on is in the unconscious, clearly, obviously, the decision has to be made at the level of the unconscious. Again, if all the data, or most even, of what we're making any decision about, about is stored in our unconscious, clearly the decision is being made at the level of the unconscious. And so what happens is like the, deci the decision is made and the unconscious mind makes us aware of it, okay? That's what consciousness is. Consciousness is awareness, okay? We are, you know, when we're conscious, we're aware of things. So naturally, um, if consciousness is just is awareness, it's not a deciding mechanism. Again, that's another way to, to see how it's the unconscious that's um, the society. And all right, so this is this is historic. And like, you know, like Freud with his talking therapy, psychoanalysis, and all, I want to kind of like give this this understanding that our wills are unconscious, our human will is unconscious, some, some real world utility. And I did an episode on this a while back, um, not sure, ah, episode number 37, and um, it, was, it was titled Causal Will Therapy. In other words, we can understand, we can use this understanding that human will is unconscious to create an entirely new, and I would predict the very effective form of, of psychotherapy, of, of, of helping us resolve psychological issues, conflicts, the kind of stuff that, that uh, we either do on our own with our friends or ourselves or, you know, with the, with the uh, help of a professional or whatever. So, causal will therapy. The idea behind this is that if, if we have this understanding that, you know, not just our human will is unconscious, it's also causal, that free will is an illusion, that's the basic understanding, you know, we don't have a free will, we have a causal will, then, then that creates a powerful, powerful motivation and incentive for people to not blame either themselves or others for anything. And um, when you think of, when you think of why people go into therapy, I would guess that the um, the number one reason has to be some kind of disturbance in relation in relating to other people. I mean, I think that's probably um, you know the, at the heart of most kinds of emotional, psychological um, illnesses, um, conditions, etc. Because um, because basically our, our emotional health is is very tied into um, you know, are, are relating to others. You know, we're, hedon we're, we're um, hedonic creatures. We seek happiness. We're also very social creatures. And as a matter of fact, um, happiness, I mean, other people is actually um, our main source of happiness in general. I mean, it's not like we absolutely need other people to be very happy, but they are, you know, our spouse, um, friends, kids, whatever, generally tend to be our greatest source of happiness. So, all right, so to the extent, to the extent that um, this, this truth, this fact that, um, that human will is, is unconscious and causal, um, think about this. Any time in therapy, you know, like um, somebody's complaining, well, they said this to me, and, you know, and they are so horrible for having done this, you know, they're a terrible person, I hate them, this, <laughs> whatever. And, and so, like, so, I mean, like, what is the therapist's response to this? And then, wait a minute, like, I mean, and I've tried this with, with some of my friends, it works. I've tried it with myself. You know, you ask the person, well, wait a minute, why is the person um, acting in this way? Why did the person say that, this harmful, hateful thing? And then the, the, the patient, you know, the client in therapy was say, well, um, he's always been like that. She's always been like that. Okay, then, then the question might be, well, why has the person always been like that? And, you know, I think it eventually dawned on the patient or client that, well, the, the, that person was obviously raised in a certain way or, you know, had certain experiences. Or, or if, if the person continues to assert that he's simply always been like that, you know, that's just the way he is, 
then um, that the next question is, well, wait a minute. If that's just the way he is, and and he's not in, responsible for being the way he is, how can you blame him for saying what he did or she whatever? You know, how can you know? Basically, what you what you're introducing is logic, reasoning to the psychotherapeutic process, which. In, in a lot of cases, I mean, to the extent that we have a b belief in free will, <laughs> all logic flies out the window, to, you know, in a lot of therapy. But, but this, you know, acknowledging and exploring the causal nature of human will, example by example, in a therapeutic setting, is going to clearly and probably very strongly and directly lead um, whoever's going through this in exploration to the conclusion that, wait a minute, you know, wh whatever it is I'm blaming, you know, wh whomever for, <laughs> that it's not, you know, it's not their fault. They couldn't help it. Either their, their genes made them do that or their upbringing, their education, what they didn't learn, what they learned and all. And um, so, yeah, so, you know, Freud gave us like the unconscious and psychoanalysis. So I'm giving us unconscious will and causal will therapy, and it's very cool. <laughs> okay, um, but it, it's even it's even bigger than this. We've got about like six minutes left. Um, what what the universe is making me do? Because you know, if if the universe wasn't making me do this, I certainly wouldn't be doing this. Not that I mean I enjoy doing this, but actually, you know, if I had a free will, and if everybody already understood that free will is an illusion, I wouldn't have to be doing the show. I'd be doing my show on happiness. I did like the show before this, 140 episodes on on happiness, <laughs> and that show is great because when you do a show on happiness, you can't help but be blissed out. And I did the show for three years, <laughs> so so yeah. If I had a free will, I'd absolutely be doing this. But all right, but the universe is compelling me, is making me do this show, is making me make the world aware of the causal nature of our will and this is much bigger again than, than just Freud and the unconscious it is, as the show begins this is bigger than, than Einstein, Darwin, um, Copernicus, Galileo, Newton this is the biggest thing ever because basically as we understand collectively as, as a global population that free will is a myth and human will is causal we will be creating a new and distinct human species. In other words, like human beings now, I mean, it's interesting. I, I've got to say this aside. Um, there was a poll that I, um, that I um, came across recently that said about 30% of the um, world doesn't believe we have a free will. But, you know, I've got to um, do a bit more exploration into that because I have a feeling that even though they kind of like have that as a categorical um, conclusion. My feeling is even those 30%, because of the influence of the 70%, and because our society and our world and our culture is founded on the premise of free will, that even those 30% are acting, you know, according to that belief, even though they, they know it's not true. So what happens is like, you know, to the extent that our world not just conceptually, but psychologically and, and through habit, you know, overcome this illusion of free will to the extent that we no longer are conditioned to think that, that what we do is up to us or up to others, then that is a, caric car that is a categorically distinct consciousness. You know, you have the current consciousness now is like, Everything's up to us. We can do, say and do whatever we want. Nothing is compelling us to do anything. The reality is no. Everything's a movie. We're robots. We're puppets. We're automatons. We're instruments of God. Call us what we will. And those two ways of seeing reality are so diametrically polar, so opposite, that clearly, to the extent that human, uh, humanity overcomes this illusion of free will, We'll be creating a new species. We'll have the same physiology, but the, the reason I think it will um, it'll justify this new designation is because, you know, it's an entirely different experience. You know, like human beings are all of a sudden experiencing reality an entirely different way. Think of it. Um, our current reality now is like we just kind of like make everything happen, you know, in real time as, as you know, whatever, you know, free, free of anything. The reality is that everything's a movie, that, you know, that basically we're just acting everything out. Okay. So I'm not sure I have much more to say. Well, 
I don't know. So, so what do we call our new species? I think like, you know, all right, what we're called now is Homo sapien. Homo means man and sapien means knowing. So we're like, we're like the knowing man, but we're not all that very knowledgeable because like, we're completely, and it's not our fault, but like how much do we know if we, if, if we attribute the, the first fact of human activity to ourselves when it's really attributable to the universe? So we're not all that knowing. So like, I think, you know, maybe like as a new kind of um, designation for, for our human species, like something like homo causal conscious, causal will conscious conscious. I don't know. I had this before. <laughs> I should have written it down. Um, just something that reflects the fact that we're conscious of the causal unconscious nature of our will. They're, we're conscious of the fact that free will is an illusion. Homo, homo causal will consciousness. I think that was the thing. All right. And that would be major. That would be major. You know, we're, we're creating a new world anyhow with this like revolution in 99%, you know, um, over the 1%. I mean, you know, it's playing out over this next year. And I've done shows on this to the extent that we all collectively understand that free will is an illusion, we're going to navigate this transition in power and wealth um, much more peacefully, much more pleasantly. And, and that will, I think, help um, to, um, to, see, um, to evolve our human species. Because basically what will happen is like when we begin to understand the benefits of not you know, blaming ourselves and others for, for things or being arrogant when we do stuff, then uh, we'll understand how much better the world can be. And as we're working on this together, you know, we can. We can, like, basically reformulate our entire educational system and also work on the adults, you know, adult and all, to just basically recondition ourselves, to, you know, um, to kind of, like, understand not just the reality of our causal will, but the benefits that accrue from it. And through, through understanding those benefits, we would um, have the incentive to... Uh, to go through the, the process of change. Okay, I hope you understand now why Freud popularized the unconscious and I am popularizing the, un, the um, unconscious will. That's all we have time for today. Uh, I appreciate your watching. In the future, we're going to ex just explore a lot of other ways of understanding why free will is impossible. Thanks for watching.